Through the themes of Connect, Create and Celebrate, we aim to support our customers by connecting businesses with each other and the wider business community, creating new contacts and opportunities and celebrating the businesses and their people. Small Biz Digital Media presents Connect, Convince, Convert, inspiring business success stories with Dave Bird, Steve Ennis and Martin Hill. I'm joined today by a lady who's got 30 years experience of working for the Chambers of Commerce for Herefordshire and Worcestershire, of which the last 16 were spent being both the deputy and full CEO of the Chambers. I'm delighted today to welcome Sharon Smith to our podcast. Welcome, Sharon. Thank you, Good Steve. Morning. Good morning. If you are an owner with a membership of the Chambers, what benefits can you take advantage of with regards to the marketing activities that can support a local business owner? Thank you, Steve. Well, there's lots of support available through the Chamber for all businesses, regardless of size or sector, and whether the business is a member or not. Our role is to support the whole of the business community with our vision being to build sustainable local economic growth. So the support we offer to businesses is broad and varied, including supporting in areas like policy, international trade, skills and information. I guess the list goes on, but we're focusing today on how we support marketing activities. So I would say this is in three main areas, events and networking, raising the profile of businesses and training. These support businesses to grow their sales and customer base by building connections and improving customer relationships. Sean, can you tell us a little bit more about the events kind of that the Chambers have? Because I understand it's extensive and the networking opportunities that exist for business owners. Yes, yeah, sure. We run about 130 events a year, including 10 sector or group specific forums such as manufacturing, women's, HR, food and drink, health and well-being, and many others. We run four conferences, two expos and one large business awards ceremony. The forums are great for learning about topical challenges or specific areas of focus, with people working alongside their peers on similar topics. Whilst providing expert information and advice, delegates can benefit from making new connections in their industry sector or with a specific group of people. And then networking events outside the specific forums and larger events are more general in their nature, so they cover a range of different locations, times and topics to enable the greatest access. Examples include breakfasts, lunches, speed working, virtual networking, expos, and about half of our customers use events and networking as part of their own business marketing activities. Well, that all sounds great and such a lot going on. Uh, there's a new thing you've introduced this year called the New Professional Services Forum. Could you tell us a bit more about that? Yes, this was actually introduced as a result of member feedback. So whilst those who will attend this will not all be in the same sector, they have a desire to work as a group together to establish and grow their connections. This in turn is likely to lead to more referrals to each other and more professional business support to their clients. So examples are property agents, lawyers, accountants, all working together with the aim of helping a client or a set of clients. So bringing them together with a common theme, common goals, like the rest of our sector forums really. Well, I'm new to networking this year as well, and I've been intrigued by two developments that are new also to the Chambers. Could you tell us a bit about networking and cross-border networking? Yeah, we try to introduce more bespoke ways and topics into the calendar each year to keep it fresh and relevant. So networking and cross-border networking are for those who want to expand their connections outside of the two counties, and they've been really popular. So our clients tell us that networking for them is about establishing and growing connections, leading to long-term relationships and increased sales. And we've many, many examples of the success of these outcomes from our events. And in addition, they say that hearing from expert speakers who can share their insights and journeys and experiences with each other is also a benefit. And what other benefits might the Chambers offer to a business owner to help them raise their profile? 
So alongside events and networking, members use the Chamber's reach and routes to market to raise the profile of their business and grow their connections and customer base. This can be in a number of ways, including using advertorial or editorial in the Chamber publication, Business Direction, which has a readership of just over 10,000, using content about their business to be featured on the website, which has about 30,000 views a month, or in our events newsletters, which reach about 5,500 subscribers, using the members area of the website to connect with each other, or finally through our social media connections where we'll share and like our members' posts. So the content that members share can be on a variety of topics. Sometimes it's about sharing knowledge and best practice with articles on about their growth or sustainability or what they've done on cyber awareness, for example. And other articles are about sharing good news. So it might be about business anniversaries, awards they've won, or new staff join them. But in the main, most businesses want to raise the profile of their business to secure their position in the marketplace, supporting increased sales and positioning them as a great local employer. And it's interesting the volume of people who are engaging in the chambers. So one of the keys to success is continuous learning. I'm interested to learn what is the proposition that the chambers offer to enable skills development for any business in the community? Yes, so customers will use the Chamber to grow their skills and their support their personal development plans and continuous learning, as you say. And in particular in the areas of marketing and customer service, to support new markets, maintaining relationships, etc., the Chamber offers a series of courses in PR, marketing, sales and customer care. So course titles will include things like an introduction to digital marketing and PR, search engine optimization, MailChimp and email marketing, Google Analytics, Canva, successful telesales, telephone techniques and creating customer culture. They're all really good value for money with discounts offered for members and two free places on the introduction to digital marketing and PR course, which I think is great. The Chamber Training provides an opportunity for local businesses to grow their skills and knowledge in a cost and resource efficient way, providing personal development and filling immediate skills gaps. Course content covers a wide range of educational support for marketing activities with some examples of learning and new skills such as how to prioritise your marketing efforts to best suit your business goals, gathering customer and prospect lists ethically and practically, measuring and understanding the effectiveness of your email campaigns, closing the sale and recognising buying signals and the Apostle model, which is about managing customer relationships. There's such a lot going on there, isn't there? That's fantastic and it's absolutely brilliant that these things are available through the Chambers. So the final question I've got is, your mantra, the Chambers, is remarkably similar to our own of connect, convince and convert. Yours is to connect, create and celebrate. So tell us a bit about that, if you will, Sharon. Yes, our value proposition was created a good few years ago now and it's stuck ever since. So through the themes of connect, create and celebrate, we aim to support our customers by connecting businesses with each other and the wider business community, creating new contacts and opportunities and celebrating the businesses and their people. And we really still feel the three words are as relevant today as they were years ago, back in the Chamber history when it was first started in 1832. So I think anybody listening to what Sharon's had to say this morning will be absolutely impressed by the range and breadth of services that the Chambers offer. So there are two things really to take away from today's uh, chat with Sharon. The first one is... Why wouldn't you, if you were in business, be a member of Chambers? One, you can learn from fellow business people within that environment, but also you can draw on the services offered by the Chambers. But really, it's more important than just being a member. It's about participation. So the thing that you've really championed, Sharon, is that members participate and engage in taking full advantage of the services that are available so it helps them and everybody in the community to grow and prosper. So it's a massive thank you from us. Uh, to have you here today, Sharon. It's been a pleasure to speak with you and we look forward to you joining us on our next podcast. Thank you.
This episode of Connect Convince Convert was produced by Dave Bird and presented by Steve Ennis. Be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed it, so you don't miss any future shows.